he's doing well. I'm coming at you at an unusual time in the first part of the new week here and taking a little bit of time off work to come and shoot a David Bowie um, music collections video. Obviously, it's been a very um, trying day for David Bowie fans and music fans for the, his loss, unexpected loss. Um, is very um, surprising to me because I was not aware of the fact that he was sick, didn't know he had cancer. Um, maybe it would, there was some public knowledge of that, but I think for the most part it was very private and he didn't make it very well known that um, he was ill. Although I will say that looking back at it now, if you watch his most recent video and listen to the lyrics of a song called Lazarus on his most recent album that I just picked, just got last week, um, there were definitely clues that his time was coming. And um, it was really a farewell, and apparently he released it just in time, on uh, purposefully, according to his management, that um, he wanted to be sure this uh, is kind of a love letter to his fans. So, very touching, very difficult, and I debated whether or not to do this, because I don't want to come across as um, jumping on a bandwagon or, um, you know, bad timing or anything like that, but I uh, just really wanted to come on and celebrate um, his life more than anything, I think, because of his uh, cultural significance and his impact on music and, you know, the creative genius that David Bowie was. Um, I'm not the biggest David Bowie fan out there. I know there are people who absolutely worship him and love his music more so than me. So, you know, but it, it, I think when you weigh the good with the bad, I think it's important to come on here and just talk about a little bit, you know, to pay tribute to somebody who was so influential and so important not only to music but to pop culture and fashion and uh, his work in films and you know he was just a, a real package and um, a, an artist in every sense of the word um, and there are very very few that could compare to his legacy that he leaves behind so I thought why not come out here do a music collections video for David Bowie and show you what I have um, by no means is it complete I'm not a singles collector I don't have singles I don't have all the live albums, I don't have all the compilations, but I do have pretty much all of his studio work, apart from maybe one that's very, very difficult to get, and I'll just go through them. I'm going to try really hard not to say anything about my favorites, uh, critiquing. It's not the place for that. Today's not the day for that. I'm not here to do any type of reviews. I just want to show you the albums and uh, just uh, pay tribute, so that's what we're doing here today. So we're just going to kind of go in reverse order. His most recent album, as I just mentioned, came out last week, and it's called Black Star, and here it is. Um, I hope that everybody gets a chance to pick this up. i, I can, got to believe that demand is incredibly high for this album at the minute, and it's probably going to be a little bit difficult to find, but just be patient, because I know that they'll press a whole lot more of these, and don't pay the eBay scalpers, the vultures prices for what they're asking for on eBay, because they'll come back and they'll press a whole lot more and everybody will be able to get this album and i will say it's very much worth getting getting it's fantastic and what a way to go out you know he, he goes out just um as with a strong message and as just as iconically as he came in um it's just a fabulous last album from david bowie and i'm so pleased that i pre-ordered it and got it before the tragic events of today because otherwise I'd be waiting like many of you will be because I went to a variety of different sites and see that it's sold out everywhere. Uh, that is the clear vinyl version of it. I pre-ordered it from his website. I think there are 5,000 copies of that and I'm just very fortunate that I jumped on it right away otherwise I wouldn't have it. So um, that was released just last week. Last, uh, to, uh, yeah, I guess it was just last year I kind of got myself in a Bowie frenzy last year because he released a compilation that I thought was so well done, and that is Nothing Has Changed, and that kind of reignited all of my fuel, and I went and completed the few that I was missing on my Bowie collection because I picked this up, enjoyed it so much, and realized that there were still a few albums I was missing in his catalog, so I guess timing is everything because I, I'm sure those albums, like all of his stuff, is going to be really hard to get for a while until they can get to the pressing plants and and do more. Um, but this is a fantastic compilation and a great introduction to Bowie if you're not familiar with his music. And even more so than the vinyl, I would say, you know, look for this because it comes in a three CD package as well. And I would say for newer fans or people who are just mildly interested in his music, I would say this is a great starting point 
to his um, many, many, you know, I think he has 25 to 27 if you count a couple of his non uh, self, he didn't use his name. Uh, we'll get to those in a minute, but uh, this is a great three disc compilation of his most loved, most well known uh, hits. So it's a great hits package here. So if you want to pause the camera, nothing has changed. Comes in a two LP package, comes in a three disc package, or a uh, two disc package. So from there, we'll go backwards. 2013, he released an album. This was a big comeback for him after a 10 year absence. Um, really shocked the world and released this with no notice and no no uh, pre-warning, no lead single, anything, uh, the next day. And uh, like a lot of people, I was blown away because this was a fantastic album. And as I promised, I wouldn't do much critiquing. I guess I don't mind saying that this is really, really good. And if you haven't heard this yet, certainly worthy of your David Bowie collection. Uh, so it's wonderful to know that he went out his last three years with a great compilation uh, and two very, very fine studio albums that are both um, staples, I would say, in his discography. So what a way to, to end a career, I suppose. So we're working backwards. As I said, it was 10 years and in 2003 was his last studio album. And this is a reissue called Reality on Music on Vinyl. Uh, this came in a couple different colors. I think there was a blue and a green and a black. This happens to be the green one. And I'm not going to open each vinyl and show you colors and whatnot. Uh, this is limited edition of some sort, limited green vinyl. Uh, I don't think they're numbered. Oh, they are numbered. This is number 1618, 1618 of reality. So I'm just very blessed to have a lot of these things. Um, from there, we go to 2002, just a year prior. He released an album called Heathen. This, I think, just got reissued again. Um, on a color vinyl, so that one might be able to be accessible. You may not have too much hard of time getting getting that. Um, but this was a music on vinyl pressing from a few years ago, and uh, just an amazing sounding. Anything on music on vinyl is always going to sound good. Um, in two, 1999 uh, was the album previous to that called Hours. Another music on vinyl reissue. This one is also on a mint green vinyl. This one is numbered, it's number 871, so I got a nice low number on ours, so that's that's good. And I uh, love the design of this album cover. He's always been so artistic, and one of the greatest things about David Bowie is you never know what to expect. Always changing, the, you know, I think people have called him the chameleon over the years because you never know what to expect, not only from how he looks and the whole visual aspect of it, but the sound, you never know what you're going to get. All right, from there we go backwards to 1997, an album called Earthling, and this is another music on vinyl pressing on black, and uh, this one came out in 1997 on RCA, so um, just really happy that music on vinyl took the time to faithfully restore and repress his later albums prior to 2013 from, you know, the mid-90s through, because otherwise I would not have these. They would be nearly impossible to get. There was an original vinyl pressing of that, but I never could get it because it was just way outrageously priced. Um, and then 1995, the last of the uh, music on vinyl represses is called uh, Outside or Experts, ex Excerpts from the Outside. And uh, another really wonderful package. You know, it's just such an interesting album cover. And um, just like all of his music, it, it you know, the... the the artwork and the um, visuals that play a big part of it and the music videos and all that so working backwards then again from there 1993 we've got an album called black tie white noise i know i'm going quick guys and i'm not doing much in the way of critiquing because i really just want to show you the records that's really what we're here for today is just to show you the records and show you that i'm been a reasonably big fan some more so than others and uh but Again, I will be the one to admit that even though I have a lot of his records, I'm not the biggest Bowie fan because I don't have the, you know, the history. You know, I'm relatively new, I would say, in the last five years to really getting into his music to at a high level. Um, a couple albums that um, I'm very, very lucky to have uh, are, are from a band he uh, collaborated with called Tim Mach Tin Machine. Here's Tin Machine 2 from 1991. This one is a little bit tricky to find. Um, they're not 
incredibly expensive if you can find a re reasonable one and you'll wait and not mind paying a bit of shipping because uh, this in America is tough to find but in other countries maybe not so much uh, but really really happy to have it I, re I really like tin machine they're a little bit more on the heavy side a little bit more uh, harder rock but um, certainly um, again you know he was just always experimenting and whatever genre he was most interested in and uh, some of his work with Trent Reznor which I have nothing on on any format other than maybe a few things on digital you know I'd love to see some of that released uh, because that that again was fantastic and here's the first Tin Machine album they did, did two albums the one I just showed you and this one came out in 1989 so about a two or three year stretch where he was in a band called Tin Machine and uh, both albums, I particularly like the second one more, but I think more commonly the first one's more popular. All right, working backwards, um, 1987, released an album, last uh, album, solo album, I guess, of the 80s, Never Let Me Down. I do love the title track of this album, and this one does have a bit of an 80s feel to it, uh, but uh, certainly there's, like all of his albums, there's always some element, there's always a few songs that you can really get yourself behind. And there's always some reason to keep following David Bowie because there isn't a bad album among them. And there's enough good tracks on every single album where it makes it interesting to purchase even if you don't love every track. Hard to love every track from a guy like David Bowie because he was always changing it up. You know, you'd have to be one of those people that love every genre of music more or less because... Um, to like every song Bowie ever did, you'd have to be, you know, one of those people who just like every format in music, every style. And um, while I consider myself pretty well-rounded when it comes to taste, um, can't say every song I've ever loved from David Bowie, but there's always a few that keep you coming back and wanting more. 1984, he released an album that, uh, you know, kind of coming off a very peak period again called Tonight. This is a you know, one of his better albums from the 80s, I would say. I do love the track Blue Jean on here. And there was another track that I really, really liked on here called Tonight. You know, that, that's, uh, the title track was fantastic. And, you know, kind of the height of the MTV era. Um, and I remember when the video came out for Blue Jean, I thought that was a, such a cool video. And um, this one everyone knows, 1983's Let's Dance. This was a huge, huge comeback. So popular, in fact, that he made the cover of Time Magazine with this album and um, you know pretty much every song on here could make a greatest hits package uh, on one of his compilations because this was a massive massive success maybe his most successful album I think sales wise um, at least in post 70s you know is his peak period I suppose you could say this was a big comeback for Bowie as everyone knows so great to have that all right uh, 1980 we have scary monsters and super creeps um, Another fantastic album cover. It just, it just says everything it needs to say. You know, scary monsters and super creeps. Uh, I just think it's just wonderful. You know, and again, there's something. There's always a track or two that really stand out on every Bowie album, and um, just so blessed to have all this stuff. Um, 1979, the last album from the 70s is one called Lodger. This is tricky to find again, in at least in, in good condition. This one didn't get a lot of attention, and it seems like I don't think it's ever been repressed. So um, I had a hard time finding this, but I finally got myself a good copy of Lodger, and I'm um, very lucky to have that. So I'm sure as uh, you know, more time passes, many, many of these records will get repressed and box sets and reissues and all that. So again, just be patient. 1977 second of two albums came out, Heroes, everyone knows this album, one of his most famous pictures of all time, album covers of all time, such a fantastic release here, every track on this album is, is amazing, so fantastic, you know, I'm just, I'm just showing it to you really, really fast, um, probably one of the more loved albums, one of the greatest albums of all time in many people's opinion is Low, the first album he released in 1977, what a year for music that was, and Bowie, Bowie had two big contributions that year to a fantastic year of music, and I do love that album cover. I mean, I wouldn't mind a big poster of that in my room. That just, uh, it's just amazing. All right, uh, moving backwards here, we've got an album from 1976 called Station to Station. 
very shortish album, but um, definitely worthy. Everyone knows the track Golden Years, um, and um, pretty big hit there for him, so it must have been a pretty successful album. I didn't take the time to look up sales and po position rankings and how many number ones he had and all that. You know, to, on a day like today, none of that really matters. Everybody just knows there's something about Bowie that everyone can relate to, I can promise you that. Uh, 1975, Young Americans, title track alone, is worth buying for this album. Fantastic. What can you say? The man's a genius. One of the, you know, few surviving artists from that era that, uh, you know, you can't replace a guy like Bowie. There's just no way. There, 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 there's, it's, he's a one of a kind. You know, there is no new Bowie. There will never be another one like him. Uh, 1974, we've got an album here called Diamond Dogs. Oh, man, look at the album cover there. I mean, it's just... Uh, can you imagine the reaction when something like that came out in 1974? Would have loved to have been a fly on the wall and listen to people talk about this album cover when it came out, because I think it would have shocked a lot of people. Still a bit shocking, really, if you think about it. Not, not in a graphic way, but it's just like... Wow, you know, it's so unexpected, and, you know, what's he, what's he done, and where'd Ziggy go, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, in 1973, he had two albums that year, one called Pinups, another bit of a shocking album cover, I guess you could say. Just, you know, I remember flipping through albums as a young child, and I would look through Bowie albums, and it always kind of freaked me out. Because I thought he looked a little bit on the scary side, if I'm being honest with you. Now I'm talking I was a small child, you know, I just thought he looked, you know crazy and weird uh, you know you come to appreciate those things later in life but as a young child i thought he looked a bit scary so dime uh, pinups there and then the first album he released that year was uh one of the most famous albums ever glad and sane you know i think everyone in the world has seen this image at one time or the other because you know a, a day when album covers meant something and it wasn't just thrown together you know there was a lot of thought i'm sure that went into all this kind of stuff so just fantastic. I would say none of these are probably any rare pressings or any first pressings or anything unusual. I'm just very, very lucky to have them. Probably one of the most famous and greatest albums of all time is uh, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spires from Mars. This is 180 gram repress. Um, I went this route because this is surprisingly difficult to find in good condition and it does command a fairly decent price tag. Uh, this one wasn't dirt cheap or anything like that, but I think I paid about 35 or 40 dollars for it a few years ago So I don't know what the availability of this album is these days. Uh, there was a music on vinyl There's been many many pressings of this so many pressings of this that um, you know pick the which one suits your budget the best, but um, Everybody who is a vinyl collector music lover music fan music collector should own this album This is a must-have in anyone's collection in my opinion all right, that was 1972, 1971. This is probably the most, one of the more special albums, I guess you could say, in my collection. I do have a limited edition one on clear vinyl of um, Hunky Dory. This is, for whatever reason, my personal favorite Bowie album. I just really relate to this album much as much as anything I own in my collection, so I did pay a bit for this. This was part of a re repackaged deal a few years ago, about a, at least a decade ago where they released them all on clear vinyl and had this strip on it from Ryko and uh, they really do sound amazing. I'd love to have the whole series of these in that Ryko clear vinyl package, but they were not cheap. When I started collecting vinyl again and I just went with one because that was what I could afford and I picked this one because um, it's my personal favorite. And again, I love that album cover. It's just so androgynous and, um, you know, it's just I don't even know what, how to describe a guy like that because he's such, so unique and so um, different than anybody else. Almost done, guys. Uh, 1970, The Man Who Sold the World. Another great album here. Just, um, you know, it's kind of still in the young stages of his career. But, uh, you know, you can certainly see his songwriting starting to develop, uh, especially from a couple of the early albums. This is his third album here, and you can start seeing some of the songwriting skills getting better and better. So, uh, two more. This is a reissue of Space Oddity. This is the 40th anniversary one. I believe this is the original album cover. There's one that maybe is a little bit more common, where his hair is even more messed up and... Um, 
Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't have that, but I have this one. The music's the same, and I like this in a way because this is um, both uh, mono and stereo on, on this. You get a copy of each of them, so that's kind of cool. So if you're out looking for David Bowie stuff, you might look for that. And then finally, kind of the same story with this one here. This is a reissue of his very first album, simply titled David Bowie. This one, again, is on that mono and stereo, so it's the same album, two different formats, mono and stereo, so take your pick what you prefer. And, um, yeah, so there you go. There's his uh, discography, I guess, on vinyl. Um, I've shown you the CD, a couple of compilations I have. I have uh, 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 Changes 2. Uh, you know, I probably picked it up really cheap, so I just added that to the collection. I've got a David Live. I think this is a pretty common live album here. So just, uh, you know, it's just really nice to have a plain, clean playing copy of him because he is an amazing live artist as well. Uh, I've got this one here called Stage. This one is not as good of condition as far as the jacket goes, but it does play very nice. So I'm really glad I have it. And then finally, I've got uh, the uh, a couple cool things to show you real quick here. I've got the... Uh, I'll show you this first because this is what I bought first and I was so excited about it because I bought this and the cassettes were sealed even though I, I'll show you in a minute why this one says LP but this is actually cassette. Um, three cassettes, this is a, a, a reissue package from Ryko. At the same time they reissued some of his early albums they did this compilation called Sound and Vision. It's a nice, it uh, came out CD, um, cassette, I think CD, cassette and uh, vinyl. And the vinyl, I didn't have until recently, and somebody in the VC was selling their copy, and I jumped on it because I really wanted it. And um, it's on six LPs, and it's clear vinyl, and this is just a fantastic compilation. I got this, I think, for it's either $85 or $90 plus shipping, so I really feel like I got a steal on that because it was in immaculate condition apart from the strip. This little thing comes right off. And that's why this one says cassette. And the other one says LP because the spine on the cassette one is a little bit messed up, or on the LP one, so I swapped them out so it looks good on my shelf. So I put the uh, cassette one on the LP so it looks good when it's sitting on my shelf. So uh, it's just clear vinyl, six LPs, but this is really nice. I'll, I should do a whole separate video on this because uh, it's such a fantastic package, so many great images, and the gate folds are really cool, but I, I want to keep this relatively short. That's my little tribute to David Bowie. I'm really proud of my collection. I'm proud I'm a fan. Um, and, you know, I think, unfortunately, today's events will probably get me inspired to go back and revisit some of these albums that I don't know as well as others. Like many people, you know, I think that, you know, that his music is being played so much all over the world that you can probably, he can hear it, you know, from heaven, I'm sure. So just keep playing your David Bowie albums. Do your own tributes, and, um, you know, I, I think that today's the day to celebrate his life and the legacy he leaves behind. So, thanks for watching. It means a lot to me, and um, we'll come back uh, my normal time, probably Friday, Saturday, and do another video, and uh, we'll see you then. So, until then, take care of yourselves, and bye for now.